Welcome to this Monday Thursday contemplative service. This evening, we recall and reflect upon three somber scenes in the story of Jesus last night with the disciples, as portrayed within the Gospel of Mark. We will be with Christ at the Last Supper. We will be with Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. We will be with Christ in the dark night of betrayal. Let us gather together in quietness, in Jesus' precious name. Are you prepared to come to the table of Jesus Christ, whose life was poured out for you? By the grace of God, we are. Are you able to watch with Jesus at prayer in the garden, indeed to struggle yourselves to be in unity with God's will? By the, By the grace, grace of God, God we are. are. Are you willing to follow Jesus, even into the dark night of betrayal? By the grace of God, we are. Then let us praise God, even in this hour of darkness. God of all grace and steadfast love, great is your name to be praised in all the earth. disciples at the Last Supper. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. 
one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to Jesus one after another, surely not I. Jesus said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, Jesus broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, Jesus gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Traditionally, when we gather in person on Maundy Thursday, we often partake in the ritual of foot washing, which represents two things. First, a renewal of the cleansing that can only come from Christ. And second, recognition of Christ's humility and love, not only for the first disciples, but for us today. The Gospel of Mark is the only Gospel that does not include the ritual of foot washing, but it still reflects Jesus' humility and love for the first disciples, even for the one who would later betray Jesus. Although Jesus anticipated the horrific disloyalty and the ultimate betrayal of Judas, what did Jesus do? Jesus still fed him. Jesus still blessed him. Jesus still offered signs of an ongoing relationship with him. The bad news is that we may also face temptation or perhaps find ourselves in situations in which we are disloyal to Jesus and may even betray Jesus in order to fit in with the crowd or to seek financial or material gain like Judas did. We may be disloyal to and betray Jesus through sins of commission by actively denying our faith or through sins of omission by failing to fulfill all the promises for a baptismal covenant. The good news, the good news is that Jesus not only recognizes, but can empathize with our humanity, our weakness, our vulnerability. Jesus knows that we are made in the image of God and that we are still growing into that likeness and that this is a lifelong journey. We are far from perfect. We are not always loyal. We have the potential and perhaps the propensity to commit sin. But the hope we have is that despite our nature, Jesus still feeds us. Jesus still blesses us. Jesus still offers us signs of an ongoing relationship. Let us pray. Mighty God, we remember Jesus' anticipation of the pending betrayal by one of the twelve disciples, one of the followers who had pledged their loyalty and love. We remember the deep denial of the disciples and their indignation. We remember that even though Jesus was aware of the pending betrayal, Jesus remained with the disciples shared the Passover meal with them, and with profound humility and generosity, offered bread and wine as a promise of a sustained relationship with them. Help us, mighty God, to recognize when we are tempted to betray the ones we love, and give us the strength to avoid doing so, and help us to be humble and generous like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
Next, we are with Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he prays three times. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and Jesus began to be distressed and agitated. And Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass. And Jesus said, Abba, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and Jesus said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more Jesus came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. As I knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane about 10 years ago, I could smell the subtle and dry kind of woody aroma given off by the rough bark of the olive trees. And I was initially filled with a sense of peace, kind of a sense of warm coziness. But then I could not help but think how Jesus must have been feeling that night, that last night before the crucifixion, the anguish, the fear, the frustration, the deep disappointment of the disciples as they failed to provide support on the darkest of all nights. Although Jesus was pleading for an escape route, Jesus also seemed to have complete trust and confidence in the will of God. Jesus said, O oh God, if it may be, let this cup pass from me. But if you will, I will drink it. How often do we say similar words ourselves? Words that reflect our acceptance of God's will. Do we just plead to escape, or do we trust in God? In this somber scene in the Garden of Gethsemane, not just one, but three of the disciples, and arguably 
Jesus' three nearest and dearest friends. They've abandoned Jesus at a time of deep anxiety and profound suffering. Although they had promised to be loyal and to be present with Jesus, they were indifferent to what was happening and seemingly unaware of what was required of them, they continued to sleep. And what did Jesus do in the crux of this pain? And as Jesus prepared to face even more pain, hostility, and the ultimate rejection, Jesus watched, Jesus prayed, and Jesus trusted God's will. So based on this story in the Gospel of Mark, it seems like the Christian way to resist whatever opposes us is to be vigilant and to be prayerful and to trust in God. That instruction to watch and pray that Jesus gave to the disciples is an instruction that still applies to us today. It was and it still is an appeal to all disciples across all time to be aware of what is happening around us and to engage in prayer. We are like Peter and James and John in that we are disciples of Christ too. We have also given pledges of loyalty and commitment to Jesus through our baptismal covenant. But will Jesus find us sleeping, like Peter, James, and John, when we ought to have been watchful? Will Jesus also find us sleeping, like Peter, James, and John, when we should have been at prayer? Will we plead for escape, or will we trust in God? Let us pray. Mighty God, we remember Gethsemane. We remember the prayers of Jesus in sorrow and in despair. We remember Jesus' own loneliness in the garden, in the need for human companionship and support. We remember the sleep of the disciples in their misunderstanding, both of Jesus and of themselves. Help us, mighty God, to prepare for the crises in our lives, for the challenges to our faith, as Jesus did, by the discipline of watchfulness, by the practice of prayer, and by trusting in God's will. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Finally, 
we are with Christ in the dark night of betrayal and the final desertion. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed Jesus. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested Jesus. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? After, day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me but let the scriptures be fulfilled then all of them deserted Jesus and fled this third scene from Jesus last night with the disciples is perhaps the most horrifying and traumatic the scene opens in the deepest, darkest time of night, with a daunting sense of urgency and anxiety. With an armed arresting party, Judas arrived quietly in the garden. There was no warning of their arrival. Judas came with a guide and the, ge the, and the greeting of a disciple, and in doing so, he marked out Jesus for arrest. Jesus was seized. There was a scuffle. One person was wounded. And what did Jesus say and do? In response to those who arrested him, Jesus confirmed his identity, and then he called out their cowardice. Jesus reminded them that they'd been together in the temple when Jesus was teaching. And Jesus subtly pointed out that, despite the protection in numbers, they had lacked the courage to arrest Jesus by daylight in the temple. Their so-called bravery after dark, led by a paid guide, the one and only Judas, was an empty, cowardly charade. And the bitterness of this betrayal by Judas and the arresting party was only deepened by the desertion of the rest of the disciples. Some theologians have suggested that what took place that night, in that deep, dark night, at the time of the arrest and the desertion, was perhaps even more painful than what happened the following day when Jesus was crucified on the cross at noon. To be betrayed by anyone is a dreadful experience. But to be betrayed by people that you know, and, and not just one, not just three, but by all of the people that you are closest to, is the deepest betrayal of all. On this dark night of betrayal, Jesus encountered catastrophic conflict and confrontation. And Jesus' response was first to confirm his identity and then to courageously call out the cowardice of others. This caused me to pause and ponder what we do when we encounter conflict and confrontation. And it reminded me of one of the promises that we make in our baptismal covenant, which asks, will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. When faced with injustice and conflict in our modern times, do we act like Jesus' disciples on that last night together, when they turn their backs on their faith, denied their relationship with Christ, and just walked away? Or do we stand up for what we believe in, 
Do we stand against what is dehumanizing in the world? Do we claim our identity in Christ? Do we challenge the status quo? Do we call out the aggressors? And do we advocate for them to be held to account? Let us pray. Mighty God, we remember the betrayal by Judas under the sign of obedient discipleship. We remember the cruel arrest of Jesus accompanied by violence and bloodshed. We remember the desertion of every disciple so that Jesus was left alone in the hands of the enemies. Lord Jesus, to whom the bitterness of betrayal and the loneliness of desertion came from the hands of your own disciples, help us in our lives, neither to betray you nor desert you. You who are the Lord of our lives, in your precious name we pray. Amen. we have been with Christ at the Last Supper when it was revealed that one disciple would soon betray Jesus. We have been with Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane when three of the disciples betrayed Jesus by not keeping watch. We have been with Christ in the dark night of betrayal, first at the betrayal by Judas, and then the subsequent betrayal of Jesus by all of the disciples in their desertion. O Christ, in your presence, we have discovered who you are, the epitome of humility, love, and sacrifice. O Christ, in your presence, we also discover who we are, 
We are reluctant to serve one another, and as you prepare to give yourself for the sake of the world, we are still seeking power, promotion, privilege, and possessions for ourselves. Forgive us and help us to value your presence more dearly. Forgive us and help us to be alert to the suffering and needs of our fellow human beings so that we may serve them. Almighty God, we thank you for the deep love of Jesus. Holy God, source of all love. On the night of Jesus' betrayal, Jesus gave the disciples a new commandment, to love one another as Jesus loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as Jesus was the servant of all, who died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from my words of distress oh my god I cry in the daytime but you do not answer by night as well but I find no rest yet you are the Holy One enthroned upon the praises of Israel our ancestors put their trust in you they trusted and you delivered them they cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, You trusted in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver you. Let God rescue you if God delights in you. Yet you are the one who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. 
they open wide their jaws at me, like a raving and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. <laughs> 